today with a sermon titled, God the Mother, the Truth of the Bible. Let us take some time to study the Word of God together. At the very end of the 66 books of the Bible, God the Father and God the Mother appear and say, Whoever is thirsty, come and take the water of life. God enlightens mankind about this through a revelation given to Apostle John. To put it another way, we can conclude that God revealed to us the ultimate purpose of human life. The journey to find the happiness and joy that mankind desires the most can, at times, be futile and painful. It inevitably leads to a sense of thirst. All mankind are meant to experience this. Undoubtedly, a significant part of this thirst comes from not hearing the word of truth from God. Therefore, what solution did God give mankind? Isn't it to seek the Spirit and the Bride? That's why in Revelation chapter 22, verse 17, the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. I believe that when all the children of Zion, who are in the darkness, are found, God will open the glorious way for us to return to our eternal home, the kingdom of heaven. With such hope in our hearts, we must all strive to stand firm in this truth. We should realize finding Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother is the ultimate purpose of human life. There are all kinds of jobs to be pursued, knowledge to be gained, and numerous life experiences to be obtained during our lifetime. However, when we find Father and Mother, they will pour out the water of life on us and quench our thirst. Even though we may have been exhausted from living a difficult life and struggling through unwanted experiences, let us bask in the divine grace of God and enjoy rest on this blessed Sabbath day. Until now, many churches have been advocating the belief that only God the Father exists. However, God the Father and God the Mother are clearly testified in the Bible, written by the prophets who were carried along by the Holy Spirit of God, aren't they? God's will is fully embedded within the Bible. It is not the will of God the Father that mankind remain unaware of God the Mother. First, let's take a look at the teachings written in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1, which enlighten us about the spiritual condition of the earth. Let's see chapter 60, verse 1. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth. Here, the earth refers to the entire world. The world is covered in darkness, and thick darkness is over the peoples. Darkness covers the earth, making it impossible to distinguish front from back or left from right. Moreover, thick darkness is over the peoples. It covers the eyes, ears, and hearts of the peoples. The only way to break free from this darkness is for God the Holy Spirit to come in the age of the Holy Spirit. Why is that? What does the Bible say about God? God is light. Let's take a look at 1 John chapter 1, verse 5. In chapter 1, verse 5, it is written, This is the message we have heard from Him and declare to you. What does the Bible say about God? God is light. In Him, there is no darkness at all. Only when God comes will everything be revealed. No matter how competent a scholar may be, or even if someone has read the Bible dozens or even hundreds of times, they will never be able to shed nor dispel the darkness. 
Only God himself can do this. That is why in Revelation chapter 5, it is written that only when the root of David, the second coming Christ comes, can the hidden truths in the Bible be revealed. The Bible lets us know that only at that time can everything be completely unsealed. In places where God is absent, there is only darkness. Only when God is present can the world become a world of light. Light cannot exist in the absence of God. Thus, God must come. However, nowadays, the churches in the world acknowledge only God the Father. The reason is found in Revelation chapter 13, which states that Satan has given the beast his power and great authority. Let us carefully examine the nature of Satan. There is a passage where God shows us the nature of Satan possesses from the beginning. It is found in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. After Adam and Eve ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, God questioned them about the sin of eating from the tree. Then he addressed Satan, asking, Why have you deceived them and punished him? At that time, what did he say to Satan? God said, I will put enmity between you and the woman. Therefore, from Satan's perspective, he is never pleased with the appearance of the woman. That is why he always insists, there is no God the mother and denies God the mother. Let us take a look at this scene by turning to Genesis chapter 3. Since God is light, Satan can no longer exert his power when both the light of God the Father and the light of God the Mother are revealed. Let's take a look at Genesis chapter 3, verse 13. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. Verse 14, So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put, what will God put? Enmity between you and the woman. This prophecy has been stamped. It is Satan's fate. He cannot escape from it no matter how hard he tries. God said, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. Therefore, in other words, only the rest of the woman's offspring can resist Satan, the devil. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. What will her offspring do? He will crush your head. When the head is crushed, this signifies the death of the serpent. God said, the woman's offspring will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. In this great spiritual battle, the woman's offspring too will suffer some damage and face hardships. For us to understand and realize this matter, we must not only know God the Father, but also God the Mother. Who does the woman mentioned here refer to? Let's find out through the Bible. Genesis chapter 3, verse 20. Adam named his wife Eve because she would become the mother of all the living. Eve became the mother of all the living. What is the meaning of the name Eve according to the footnote? Its meaning is living, that is, life. Therefore, Eve is the source of life. Think about life. Only God can be referred to as life. A mortal being cannot be called life. Since the woman is the source of life, Satan has been waging a spiritual war against her for centuries. Satan is very well aware that the appearance of the woman signifies his defeat. 
It is because God prophesied about this and bestowed this destiny upon him beforehand. As a result, Satan makes every effort to prevent people from knowing this truth and the woman from appearing. One misleading notion propagated by Satan is that there is no God the Mother. He is leading mankind into deception. However, according to Zechariah chapter 14, where does the living water flow out from on that day? It flows out from Jerusalem. Then who is Jerusalem? Jerusalem that is above is free. And who is she? Our mother. Satan hates the appearance of God the mother the most. Thus, what has he done to the entire earth spiritually in order to prevent people from knowing her? He has turned it into a world of darkness, just as it is written in Isaiah chapter 60. Since darkness covers the entire earth and thick darkness is over the peoples, it is imperative for God the Father, who is light, to come and for God the Mother, who is also the light, to appear as well. Above all, Satan knows better than anyone that when God the Mother appears, his head will be crushed inevitably. In other words, it means his destruction is imminent. Since Satan is well aware of this, he absolutely does not want the truth of God the Mother to be spread throughout the whole world. Despite all his hindrance, what should we do as heavenly children? As it is written in Isaiah chapter 62, we should never be silent but boldly proclaim this truth until Jerusalem receives the praises from the whole world. Let's take a look at Isaiah chapter 62, verse 6. Chapter 62, verse 6. I have posted watchmen on your walls, Jerusalem. They will never be silent day or night. You who call on the Lord, give yourselves no rest and give him no rest till he establishes. Who does God establish? Jerusalem. Who is Jerusalem according to the book of Galatians? Therefore, it is God the Father who reveals the existence of God the Mother to his children, who unveiled the existence of Eve to mankind and even proclaimed her name. It was Adam, the husband of Eve, in a similar manner, Isaiah chapter 62 states, Give him no rest till he establishes Jerusalem and makes her the praise of the earth. Heavenly children must diligently carry out this mission. Due to our earnest efforts and hard work, Satan is gradually losing his spiritual power in the invisible world. Isn't this the reason why more and more people from all around the world have the correct understanding about the glory of God the Father and God the Mother and return to the light of truth? When it is dark, they cannot discern what is in front or what is behind them. Thus, even if we tell them to come to the Spirit and the Bride, they cannot. Let's take a look at Revelation chapter 22, chapter 22, verse 17. In verse 17, it is written, The Spirit and the Bride say, Isn't the Spirit God the Father according to the Trinity? Then, who is the Bride of God the Father? Here, God the Mother and God the Father are speaking to mankind. God the Father and God the Mother say, Come, and let the one who hears say, Come. Let the one who is thirsty come, and let the one who wishes take the free gift of the water of life. If we hope for the eternal kingdom of heaven, salvation, the truth, and forgiveness of sins, whom should we come to? We must come to God the Father and God the Mother, that is, the Spirit and the Bride. This is the one thing that mankind must do above all else. There are many things to study, such as the Sabbath day, the Passover, the seven feasts in three times, and various prophecies in the Bible. 
However, what is the ultimate purpose of studying them? Suppose someone does not know God the Father and God the Mother, but knows very well about the Sabbath day and the Passover. If that person fails to find father and mother in the end, all that knowledge becomes meaningless. We must find God the Father and God the Mother. Only then will God grant us eternal life. When we possess eternal life, we will be completely freed from sin and the power of Satan. Isn't this true for all heavenly children? Therefore, the only hope for mankind is mother. It is God the Father and God the Mother. Unfortunately, mankind remains ignorant of this fact. It is because their eyes have been closed who close their eyes. Satan has shrouded the earth with thick darkness and brainwashed mankind for thousands of years. As a result, even though she is clearly recorded in the Bible, they speak as if there is no God the Mother in the Bible, don't they? Let's take a look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image. Since God mentioned about his own image, God must have a certain image in the spiritual world. Isn't this true? God said, Let us make, what is God going to make? Mankind in our image, in our likeness, that we have in the spiritual world. Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. What did he create? Male and female, he created them. Then, in whose image was the male created? Also, in whose image was the female created? The Bible clearly records that God created them in the image of God. What was the result? Male and female were created. Thus, we can conclude that male and female are copies of the image of God. The male image was created by reflecting the masculine image of God. While the female image was created by reflecting the feminine image of God. What did God say when creating mankind? Did he ever say, I will make mankind? God said, let us make mankind. Then what does it mean that God referred to himself as us? Who is there besides God the Father? Can't we confirm the undeniable existence of God the Mother? Don't all Christians call God, who has the masculine image, God the Father? Then naturally, who is the one with the feminine image, who has granted mankind the breath of life? Undoubtedly, it is God the Mother. The Bible was recorded by those who spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. People say that the books of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy were written by Moses, considering him as the author. However, who is the true author? It is God himself. To put it simply, God delivered the messages and Moses merely wrote them down. Therefore, it is the will of God the Father and God the Mother. Also, it is written in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. Who told Moses to record these words? It is none other than God. As seen in Genesis chapter 1, who was present in the kingdom of heaven even before mankind was created? We can realize that God the Father and God the Mother were there. We must understand that we were created in the spiritual world. What will happen to Satan when the woman appears? 
From that moment on, he will face a critical problem of his head being crushed. So he continuously deceives mankind saying, there is no God the Mother. Since he brainwashed mankind that there is no God the Mother, the Bible likens this state to darkness since it eliminates the presence of light. Then, who must appear? In 1 John chapter 1, it is written, God is light, thus God must appear. Let us be more specific. According to Revelation chapter 22, verse 17, God the Father who is the Spirit and God the Mother who is the Bride must appear. Only when God the Father and God the Mother appear and mankind comes to God the Father and God the Mother with complete faith can they be given the promise of everlasting peace, eternal life, the forgiveness of sins, and true hope for the kingdom of heaven. Isn't this true? Mankind desperately needs God the Mother. To defeat Satan, there must be God the Mother at work. Let's take a look at Revelation chapter 12. Chapter 12, verse 9. The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. The ancient serpent from the Garden of Eden has become a great dragon, and now he prowls around to deceive souls, leading them down to the path of temptation and into the world of darkness. When light is revealed, his very existence becomes fully exposed. Thus, he hates the light. Everyone, do you know how to reduce the crime rate? We need to eliminate dark streets. People say that installing street lamps and CCTVs in different locations significantly decreases the crime rate. In places where there is light, the crime rate is low. But what about in places with no light? All sorts of heinous crimes may occur. Let's see verse 17. Then the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to wage war against the rest of her offspring, those who keep God's commands and hold fast their testimony about Jesus. The dragon stood on the shore of the sea. What kind of fate will the dragon encounter after this war? he will face the fate of his head being crushed. However, the rest of the woman's offspring have distinct characteristics compared to other churches. What are their characteristics? They have the characteristic of keeping God's commandments diligently and faithfully. Although today is an ordinary day in the world, isn't it a great and holy Sabbath day for us? It is the day that commemorates the power of the Creator. On this Sabbath day, the commemorative day of the Creator, we have come to God the Father and God the Mother to offer our thanks, praise, and glory. How truly blessed we are to dwell within Father and Mother. In the spiritual world, there are two groups, those who follow Satan and those who follow God. Ultimately, God has declared their fates. Satan will suffer a fatal wound to his head, whereas the rest of the woman's offspring will only be injured to the extent of their heel. Hence, it is understandable that Satan is furious now as the woman has appeared. Before her appearance, Satan could control the world, but now deception is no longer possible. Why is that? We now know everything. Through the teachings of God the Father and God the Mother, we even know how he changed the truth. This makes Satan furious. He had hidden the truth from people for centuries, but now God reveals everything. It is the same with people. Those who have sinned become extremely upset when someone says, you have committed this kind of sin, even though they are indeed guilty of sin. Satan is currently in such a state of anger. Why is that? It is because the woman has appeared. In Africa, we proclaim, believe in God the Mother. 
In Asia, we proclaim, believe in God the Mother. In Europe, too, we proclaim, believe in God the Mother. The whole world is shouting toward the people to believe in God the Mother. In Isaiah chapter 62, it is written, You watchmen on the walls of Jerusalem, do not be silent, cry out day and night. When we cry out in this manner, Satan becomes distressed. When we compare it to the human body, it is like experiencing a headache. A small pain can be overcome. However, it comes from here and there. Since the entire world is abuzz, it becomes unbearable. Thus, in anger, Satan tries to make war against the rest of the woman's offspring, those who keep God's commands and hold fast their testimony about Jesus. The enemies of Satan are the righteous ones who stand with God. Satan keeps waging war against those righteous ones. Since they do not align with Satan's will, Satan wages war against them. These righteous ones have a distinctive characteristic. They diligently keep God's commands. They faithfully keep the Sabbath day and the Passover. They wear the veil on their heads because it is God's command. The Bible confirms that these people who keep God's commands are the rest of the woman's offspring, that is, the children of God the Mother. Through this Sabbath day, when we commemorate the power of the Creator, let us make every effort to preach the good news about Jerusalem Heavenly Mother, who grants mankind the free gift of the water of life and leads them to the eternal kingdom of heaven, the world all mankind have hoped for. Let us shine the light of the truth about God the Father and God the Mother to the whole world, so that we can lead all people to the kingdom of heaven, where there is the ultimate happiness that mankind yearns for. We must be prepared to endure the slightest pain. Though we may experience the pain of bruising our heels, God promised to bestow upon us the everlasting joy of the kingdom of heaven, where we will reign forever and ever. Let us firmly believe that this promise will surely be accomplished without fail, hoping that all our heavenly family members will be able to graciously follow the teachings and guidance of Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother with obedience, I would like to conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.